In this video, I'll be sharing 10 Fortune 500 brand building secrets. What I believe you can learn from the world's biggest companies and best brands that can help you take your brand to the next level. Hi, my name is Justin Kraut, and I created Corporate Marketing Guy to share proven ways to build your real estate brand like the pros. I spent 20 years in the corporate world working closely with some of the world's biggest companies like Walmart, Amazon, Target, and Costco. In the last five years, I led the revitalization of the Mr. Coffee brand, and I launched the most successful new product at a $9 billion company and Google's number one holiday item in 2020 called Mr. Coffee Iced. Looking back at that journey, I get excited to think about what secrets I could share with you to help you build the best brand possible. But before I get started, I encourage you to stick around to the end because I wanna share a bonus secret one that I honestly believe has the power to connect your brand with clients in ways you never imagined. So let's get started. The journey I was on with Mr. Coffee and the journey you are on with your brand is to create an irresistible brand for your customers. You do this through three main activities. You learn and get knowledgeable about your market. You discover and unlock the best version of your brand and you bring your brand to life. You activate and amplify it through touch points. The secrets I'm sharing with you are within these three activities. Learn, there is no substitute for the hard work it's gonna to take to learn about your market. You need to learn everything you can about your industry, your clients, your competitors, and the markets and communities you serve. With Mr. Coffee, we were doing this all the time. We had to stay up to speed. In the long run, the quality of your brand and your reputation rests on this expertise. And for Mr. Coffee, we also spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on market research, studies, consumer interviews. But as I think back now, a lot of the most valuable insights we used actually were not found in the research. This leads us to my first secret. Secret number one, be intensely curious. The best ideas hide in plain sight. Even after all the research and studies we did, I think about one specific trip I took that was a catalyst for Mr. Coffee Iced. I had this really cool opportunity to go to Australia. And when I came back, I was extremely curious about consumer coffee journeys. What I learned in Australia is that the culture somehow rapidly went from most people making instant coffee, which is essentially powder and hot water, to making full-blown espresso-based lattes. Everyone in our Sydney office was making them the hard way. Steaming milk, tamping, latte art, all that stuff. It made me really curious about the American coffee journey. Why do we drink the style of coffee that we do? How do our preferences change over time? And most importantly, how are younger coffee drinkers here starting their journey? It led us to clearly see the cold coffee, especially for the youngest coffee consumers, was not a trend. It was not just seasonal. It was something they enjoyed all year long. And if we weren't playing in that space, Mr. Coffee would continue to become just a brand from the past. So by being intensely curious, the idea and the strategy for Mr. Coffee Iced came to life. This was a huge idea and it was hiding in plain sight. Secret number two, expand your lens. Consider everyone you're competing with. With any brand, you have to stay laser focused on your closest competitors and what they're doing. And with Mr. Coffee, we focused on the usual suspects, Keurig, Cuisinart, Espresso. We couldn't take our eyes off these guys, but focusing here would only take us so far. We started to look much more carefully at everyone we were competing with, and it led us to the places where people were getting the coffee they wanted most. We needed to expand our lens, and we found that the real competition we had for younger consumers was actually the menus and the drinks at places like Dunkin' and Starbucks. See, when you get intensely curious and expand your lens like this, you unlock opportunities and you find new ways to compete. You also quickly find areas you need to improve. And that leads us to the next secret. Secret number three, challenge the norms, face the brutal facts, your baby may be ugly. First of all, no actual baby is ugly, they are all precious. When I say baby, I'm referring to your products or your services, the way you do what you do, or how your industry has always operated. These can be things you developed or designed, have you grown to love, or maybe Maybe you've just gotten really, really used to. There's always room for improvement and you need to challenge the norms and sometimes face the brutal facts. And every business has many ways to do this, especially in real estate. Here's an example. Several years ago, I hired an intern one summer named Megan. She was still in college, so maybe 20 or 21 years old. On her very first day, we were having this massive ideation session. We had coffee makers everywhere. The moment Megan walked in, I was holding our main coffee pot or carafe and we were talking about the design, which had 
hadn't changed in years. I realized that this would be a perfect way to get direct, honest, unfiltered feedback from someone that literally had no background on our business. I simply asked her what she thought of the coffee pot, and I clearly remember her saying these three things. That is so old fashioned. I would never buy that. And then she asked me, do we still make those? I was holding the main coffee pot we used in all of our products. And what Megan was telling me was that our baby was ugly. It was funny at the time, but we all knew it to be true. So we faced the brutal facts and we made the improvement. And I encourage you to do the same thing when it comes to your products, your services, the way you conduct your business. You probably know what these things are. In what way have you heard your baby is ugly? You know it when you hear it. So take this as an opportunity to make the improvements. Discover. So on this journey, you'll always be learning about your market and finding opportunities, but you also need to discover your brand identity and build your brand DNA. What you need to establish are guardrails for your brand. Your brand identity provides an anchor and a filter, a way to ensure you are always communicating on brand. That leads us to secret number four, build your brand identity. You have to start here. Everything else comes later. When I started coaching real estate agents, they naturally wanted to focus on logos, colors, styles, all that external stuff. But we never start there. We always start by building their brand identity. What you need to understand is that your brand is actually composed of a set of choices. Choices you need to make around how you share your story, who you really want to serve, and how your brand will uniquely add value to your clients. Think of your brand identity as a blueprint, a blueprint for everything you end up communicating. Your logo, the styles, colors, fonts, all that external stuff reflect your brand identity and they need to come from it. With Mr. Coffee, we spent three months building a new brand identity to revitalize the brand. It shouldn't take you that long, but you have to make the investment. Everything starts here. Secret number five, share your story. You and your brand have superpowers. At the foundation of every brand identity is a brand story that needs to be shared. And every brand founder has unique abilities, gifts, skills, or superpowers that help their brand take flight. Take Mr. Coffee. 50 years ago, Vincent Morata and Sam Glazer founded Mr. Coffee in Cleveland, Ohio. They somehow convinced Joe DiMaggio to represent the brand for 15 years, even though he didn't actually drink coffee. Mr. Coffee defined the taste of American coffee at home. It was featured in the movie Spaceballs, and it was even in the theme song for Cheers. The average real estate agent is 55 years old. So through the course of their life and their career, they have these amazing stories to share. And they have these gifts, these superpowers that make Make their brand unique. You have an amazing story to tell and these gifts, these superpowers that need to be shared through your brand. Secret number six, you have to make trade-offs. You cannot be all things to everyone. I mentioned that your brand is composed of a set of choices and choices require trade-offs. In this way, you create guardrails. And since I love swimming, think of swim lanes for your brand. You do this so that you, your brand, and your team can be focused on what's most important. You need to be intentional, even unapologetic, about what your brand represents, what clients you most want to serve, and what clients you don't. For example, Mr. Coffee is a very accessible, affordable brand that you can buy almost anywhere. It's a brand for people that are down to earth and unpretentious. So if you're image driven and you wanna reflect some kind of prestige in your coffee maker, Mr. Coffee is not the brand for you. And that's cool. That's a guardrail for Mr. Coffee, a choice we made so that we could be stronger for the clients that we wanted most. You have to make these same types of trade-offs for your brand. You cannot be all things to everyone. So we talked about learning your market and discovering your brand Activation is where the fun really begins. This is where your brand identity comes to life. Now you work on your logos, taglines, colors, styles, all that external stuff. You can also now communicate with clarity and confidence because you have a clear identity and a way to always ensure that you're on brand. But activation is also about taking consistent action. That leads us to secret number seven. Your brand is always in motion. It's always getting stronger or weaker. Think about a boat on the ocean. Even when the engine isn't on, the boat is always moving because the current is always pulling it. Think of your brand the same way. If your competition is really Really strong and you aren't doing anything to activate your brand, your brand is drifting away. It's getting weaker. 
We were always proactively building Mr. Coffee through new products or updated packaging, marketing campaigns. We needed to activate our brand to grow stronger. And so do you. Your brand is always in motion. You need to consistently activate your brand to be sure it's always growing stronger. And that leads us to secret number eight. Get ahead of it. Plan months ahead. Christmas is coming. Brand activation needs to be proactive. Think about how early Christmas stuff starts showing up in stores. Retailers like Target and Walmart, they're experts at this. They plan months and months in advance to be ready for major holidays and seasons throughout the entire year. Then they intercept us at just the right time with those products. Christmas is coming was the type of expression we used if we felt that some aspect of our activation efforts were slipping. Somebody might say, is Christmas coming this year? And obviously, yes, it is. But the point was we weren't always prepared. We weren't making the plans in advance, but we knew it would always be coming. It was a silly little reminder that it would help us get back on track. Do yourself a favor and plan ahead. Plan activities that engage your clients with your brand in meaningful ways and do it weeks or even months ahead. You and I know there's a holiday for virtually everything in our country. So you have tons of opportunities to creatively activate your brand. But don't go it alone. Which brings us to secret number nine, invest in partnerships. Sometimes all you need to do is just ask. I love partnerships. This is where one plus one equals three. You team up with another brand or another business that serves the same clients you serve, but that doesn't compete with you. And it can be so easy. Here's an example. When we first started developing Mr. Coffee Iced, I started exploring partnerships. It took me a few Google searches to find Tarani, this amazing company in San Francisco that sells coffee flavoring and syrups. They ended up being a perfect fit for us to work together. After I did the Google search, I used LinkedIn and I found a contact there. We had a conversation that same week. All I had to do was reach out, explain what I was thinking in terms of a partnership, and just ask if they were interested. It really was that simple. And if they had said no, that would been fine. I would have found somebody else. And these partnerships don't have to be big. If you're serving a community like a real estate agent, think about all the great local businesses you've worked with. All these hardworking people that do an amazing job all over our communities. There is greatness all around you and tons of opportunities to partner up. Sometimes all you have to do is just ask. And finally, secret number 10, sell an experience. Move beyond just a transaction. As I coach real estate agents and I learn more about their world, I am continuously amazed at the depth and quality of the relationships they create with their clients. So it's really frustrating for me as a marketer to see so many agents lose these relationships after the transaction. So what I always suggest is find creative ways, go above and beyond for your clients and do something memorable. Here's an example. I'm gonna compare two products I launched in 2020. The first was through a partnership with Walmart. We launched a traditional, everyday good value coffee maker. It had a good price point and it had good performance, just a good transaction. With Mr. Coffee Iced at Target, we focused on the experience of enjoying iced coffee. We included a large tumbler and a straw because we knew how iced coffee was enjoyed. With Tarani's partnership, they developed amazing recipes. Then they went even further and they gave away a free bottle of syrup with each purchase. Target started getting really excited and they decided to put all of our products together at the end of an aisle called an end cap where we would get tons of exposure and tons of traffic when we launched and the product took off. We went from X to 10X, from selling a transaction to selling an experience. After buying it, these happy iced coffee drinkers started sharing it and it just kept getting bigger. So think about what memorable experiences you might create for your clients. What would get them to share and recommend you and your brand? And how can you move beyond just a transaction? Thanks for sticking around. At the beginning of this video, I promised to share a bonus secret, one that would amplify your brand in ways you never imagined. So here it is. Secret number 10 plus, share what's in your heart. Show your clients what you really care about. Show them you care for something bigger than you, bigger than your brand, bigger than your business. Here's an example. I was talking to a real estate agent recently that was planning an event. She wanted to bake pies with her friends and share them with her community at a park. That sounds amazing, but let's think bigger. First, let's expand our partnerships. If we're serving and eating pie, we're gonna need ice cream. 
So let's invite our favorite ice cream place. Maybe they have a truck and they can meet us at the park. And what else would you need with pie and ice cream? Coffee. So let's go get our favorite roaster, our favorite coffee house to be there and make some amazing lattes. You can see how this thing can really grow. Now let's level up again. And since I'm corporate marketing guy and I need you to think big, let's get in touch with the people that make Ready Whip. We'll tell them how much we love their brand, that we've used it our entire life, which my family has, and that we're planning this amazing event in our community. And we'd love for them to participate. Who knows? Maybe they'll send some free products. You just need to ask. And if they say no, fine. We'll call the Cool Whip people. My family loved Cool Whip too. We'll just keep going and keep asking. These corporate companies want to build their brands too. And they're always looking for ways to connect with people in the community. So now we've created an event and an experience. And this thing's getting big. And let's say you created it. Now let's go even further and let's share what's in your heart. Let's introduce a cause. Something you really care about. Single moms, at-risk youth wounded veterans and their families. You come up with a cause, and maybe that cause even connects to your brand story. We'll ask that our partners help donate some or all of the proceeds to help that organization. Choose a cause you really care about, and one you know your community can get behind, and watch this thing take off. We can turn a simple event, a simple idea, into an amazing experience with your brand at the center. And when you share what's in your heart, you have the power to connect your brand with people in ways you never thought possible. As I hope you can tell, my goal is to provide massive value to you by simply sharing what I've learned from the corporate world. So if you did find value, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thanks so much.